Facebook Live for this year. It's the first of the one for 2021, um, if you're watching in replay. And um, I hope everybody is safe, staying safe. And let's get going. We're going to talk about, um, you know, steps that you can take to actually create habits. And those habits are to replace the goals, the New Year's resolution goals, the ones we set that we tend to drop after a few weeks. Now, if that's you, you're not alone. 90% of people um, let their New Year's resolutions or new goals for the year drop by mid-February. So you're not alone. You know, the bulk is gone by then, about 90% is gone. So it's something, you know, that happens. We get all gung-ho and we want to get things done. And then we hit a wall and things start to peter out or we just let them go and we slide again. So if you'd rather change it or use a different technique. So this is an alternative technique to help you try and achieve those same goals um, is to use these micro or small habits, small actionable habits that you can um, create in your life. They're an alternative, as I said, to setting goals. It's an alternative way of setting goals. And we're going to use a shorter period of time because we're going to create a little bit of urgency on this. So we don't want to go a full year. We're actually going to go 12 weeks. That's the length I would go if I was setting a habit because they're small, they're habits. So therefore, we should be able to get them in place and automated within the 12 week period. Um, and, you know, in the following 12 weeks, you'll do a new another habit in around a similar goal and and so forth and so forth. And you build them up, you build those small habits up. But I'll explain all that as we go through. Um, I'll, I'll use one example throughout the whole thing and we can we can run through it and see how we get, you know, see how you, you can see how we get on with it. So um, if you're looking for the original blog, I'm going to link it in the description below. It's at Deborah Byrne Psychology Services dot com. And um, so let's begin. So a bit tongue tied this morning. I think I'm a bit tired. Uh, homeschooling. So very tiring. Um, and um, I haven't done homeschooling for quite a number of years, guys. So I'm back homeschooling my grandchildren. I'm, I'm really exhausted. Um, so 12 steps. Let's talk about 12 steps. Um, the first one is you're going to need a calendar. Um, I don't care if it's the calendar on the wall. Um, you know, you keep one in the wall um, in the kitchen or somewhere like that, that you, you keep your calendar. You use, if you're like me, you use your planner paper i love my planners i collect these by the way i love them um if you have a planner paper planner or if you have an online calendar i don't care where it is you need a planner because you're going to allot yourself some time small amount of time we're talking about things that you can do within five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes max I would I would recommend 20 minutes max for an activity this this habit that you would allocate now you can allocate it on a daily basis or maybe it's it's something you would do once a week that you would mark down in your calendar I'm doing this I'm doing it at a certain time this is to help me change my lifestyle so we can talk about what you might some suggestions I'm going to give you some suggestions of things you can do this morning so the first thing you need to do is get yourself some sort of calendar either a wall calendar, as I said, a paper paper calendar, or if you already have um, a Google calendar, if you're using something like that online. And we're going to work out how much time we need to create this new habit. I'm suggesting 12 weeks maximum. That would be normal, like 90 days for to get a habit automated in your life. It can take anywhere from um, 66 days to 90 days for you to do that, for to, to create that change in your life and to make it part of your lifestyle. So I would say 12 weeks maximum. Um, the second thing you're going to do is pick your start date and your finish date. Now, the finish date is more important. You're you're making a commitment to yourself that within the 90 days, that's your finish date. Within 90 days, I'm going to have created this change in my lifestyle, this mini habit. It's a small, we're only working on mini habits, guys, small, tiny ones, because we don't want to go back to the big goal and the New Year's resolutions, which fail because they fail. And I've talked about this before. They fail because they're too big. We set ourselves up for failure by setting up too, too big a goal. 
that's what's happening there you're hitting a hump you're hitting the wall and you're just failing with it and then you're letting it go you go oh, i can never do this i'll never do this you can if you set it small enough if you set the change small enough and that's where the mini habits come in these small tiny micro habits or mini habits that you can do in 10 to 15 minutes a day okay so number three very very important this is one you we never skip why why do you want to do this create your why the why will actually keep you motivated to keep you going for the 90 days okay so you have you all you just say to yourself i only have to get to 90 days that's all i only have to get i'm not doing a whole year i'm only getting to 90 days um so it'll keep you motivated when you feel like oh no i can't and if it's small enough if it's small enough if it's you know within 5 10 15 20 minutes then you'll also stay motivated you'll also know yeah i can do that even on my my worst day when i'm feeling really tired if it's it's only something you can do within five minutes or three minutes then you'll still do it you will do it you'll just do it and it'll be a tick off but you can tick it off you can track it in your planner so you allocate the time in your planner you have your start and finish date and you say okay i'm going to do this now creating the why so why do you want to do it that's a question you have to ask yourself why do i want to do it what do i want or hope to achieve from this so the example we're going to run through with this is getting fit getting fitter a lot of people this time of the year you know set up i want to get fitter i want to lose weight so if that's the reason that's your goal you want to get fit but why if you don't attach a why to it and if you don't attach an emotional why to it not just the logical why but the emotional why that will dig it in deeper the emotion is going to dig it in really deep so maybe it's to have more energy for my kids then maybe that's your reason i'm going to have more energy with my kids um you know i I've, I've heard of a guy who decided um that he wanted to lose some weight and the reason was for his children it wasn't for himself but he realized that he was so overweight that he was going to be dead within the next few years um he was quite a substantial amount of weight i think some 400 pounds or something so he set about doing small habits every single day changing his lifestyle in order to lose his weight but it wasn't for his own health it wasn't the fact that he was going to die it was the fact he wanted to be there for his children when they grew up he had two small children um and that was why that is, it was emotional his attachment to his children so you've got to think you know why do i want to do this um why do you want it to exist what will it get what will you get out of it that's the emotion what am i going to get out of this i'm going to have more energy for my kids that's that's your why on the exercise i'm going to have more energy for my children um you know i'm going to have more energy i'm going to feel feel a lot better about it um so remember it has to be emotional but it also has to fit into your lifestyle if you're trying to create a goal or a habit it doesn't matter which even with these small you know mini habits that you'll set up um if they are not uh in line with your lifestyle if they are not in line with your values and your beliefs you're going to sabotage yourself it's 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 as simple as that you will sabotage yourself <clears throat> sorry i just need to take a drink it's another reason why we fail at our goals they just don't we just don't believe we deserve it um so we we have it has to be in line with your beliefs about yourself um now i go into changing your beliefs and changing your thinking patterns around yourself in my group it's a whole training um it's actually a quite a substantial training um in that unit and you can come into the group it's it's a free group the units are there um and you can take them in your own time but you also have the added benefit of me there to support you and you can ask questions so come along you know come in join i'll leave a link in the description below to join the group so if you want to do that you can and that'll help you with your why and changing your your whole thinking around you know deserving things and being good enough and seeing yourself as not a failure so if you want to do that and you want to work on that mindset um do come in to the group um number four is you know set your one habit and it is only one habit at a time <clears throat> sorry as a small actionable step it has to be actionable you have to be able to take action on it even if it was something like tracking your mood 
you can set a measurement there. So you can set a one to five. Uh, how is my mood today? If you wanted to um, track your mood, then you would set a measurement on it of say one to five, and then you could allocate it. And that means it's actionable. It makes it a bit more measurable and actionable there. You can do it that way. So we're going back to our fitness as our example for fitness. So our small actionable goal, if you think about it, you're not going to get up from couch to run a 5K. Just not going to happen in one day. Your mini habit would be to do five to 10 minutes every day. That's all you do. Five to 10 minutes walk every day. You can you can build on it. Now you can, <clears throat> with something like that, you might build on it every two to three weeks. You might say to yourself, okay, I got five minutes this week. In two weeks time, okay, I'm feeling okay, I'm feeling comfortable. Um, then I'll increase to 10 minutes. And then two weeks later, you say, okay, I'm feeling comfortable at the 10 minute mark. I'll increase to 15 minutes. It's something we would use in CBT for pain management. It's called pacing. Um, so, um, you know, you, could, you, you, you raise the bar little by little by little. But the minimum, even if you were at the 15 minute mark, as I said, the minimum you would do to keep you going would be the five minutes. You would just bring it back for that day because you weren't feeling that great or you're feeling that tired or you were a bit rushed, but you'd bring it back to your five minute mark of walking. Um, other examples. So some examples you could do here. <clears throat> your goal maybe is to improve your health for the year. Um, something simple, instead of just saying, okay, my goal is gone. That's it. Not going to be able to do it this year again, yet again. So you improve your health. What about just taking a supplement? Simple supplement, vitamin, B, vitamin uh, D, vitamin C, very important this time of the year, very important um, because of what's going on as well. Something like that is a simple improvement. You are improving your life. You are improving your health. It's a simple change. It's a simple change you can, you can make every day. Another one you could do around your health would be to, um, you know, swap one glass of water for every cup of tea or coffee you have. So every second cup of tea, instead of having a cup of tea or, or coffee, you would have, um, you know, you'd have a cup of water, a glass of water instead. Um, mindset, something around your mindset, you know, how you're feeling. Um, so writing everything down at night, just a simple brain, don't get it all out. All the to do's, we've talked about this before, all the to do's, um, it takes about five minutes, all the to do's, the appointments, um you know something you've got to put on the shopping list and then all that all the emotions up and out and that helps in fact prove your sleep as well as your mindset um you know just writing the simple act of writing everything down in your planner um instead of trying to keep a running tally in your head of what you have to do during the day write it down plan it out um improving your finances maybe that's something you wanted to do this year and you you know already got you know, the credit card bill has come in. Um, <clears throat> but you can simply save a small amount of money, like five euros every week. That could be your goal, two euros every week. Um, you're still saving, you're still improving your finances. You're setting up that emergency fund um, by doing that five euros a week or five euros per pay package. And if you think about it, you know, five euros per week this time next year, that's 260 euros um, <clears throat> that you can put off towards Christmas or something. Um, you know, another small tweak, and this is what I was saying about you can do it maybe once a week, is as a couple, just set aside 20 minutes to talk about your finances every week. Because you're not in it alone as a couple, you're in it together. So you both should be balancing the, the checkbook. You both should be, um, you know, uh, talking and discussing your finances and where they're going to be spent. A lot, an awful lot of time with a couple, um, it's left to one person. And that is completely unfair. But it happens. It happens more often than we think. Um, something around your career, maybe something about an achievement log. Every day, what was the win of the day? That doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be achievement logs. Don't have to record something, um, you know, major in your life, like getting a degree um you know moving to a new job getting a promotion it can be something as simple as somebody congratulated me on a great presentation um i completed the project 
um, you know, I got to the end of the day, I got to the end of the week. Maybe it was something as simple as that. Making a note like that and keeping a running tally um, of just one little thing. That's what I call magic moments. So they're little tiny things that are positives that I achieved. And it just doesn't it doesn't have to be um, with regards to your career. You can do that with other aspects of your life. And I've I'm actually introducing this magic moments to my group as a way of reframing um, your mind. It's an alternative uh, to doing gratitude every day. So if you want to start, start taking part in that every week, you can again join the group and um, we, you know, we're going to start on Monday. I did the training about it yesterday and how it actually changes your, your mindset. Um, you know, another thing about your career is maybe make notes, start getting in the habit of just simply jotting down a few notes after the meeting. So while it's fresh in your head, who agreed to do what, when and where? It's a simple exercise. It'll take you only a few minutes. But again, you don't have to keep that information up here. OK, you don't have to keep it up there. And therefore, it's putting less pressure on you. It's reducing your stress. So you're not only um, helping your career, but you're also reducing your stress level. So you're improving your mental and physical health. Um, maybe you want to improve your relationships this year. Um, so, you know, setting aside and allocating, you have to allocate it. 10 minute phone call to a supportive friend somebody you know is supporting you you want to push out those negative vampires um so or maybe just creating that date night now i know we can't go out at the moment because of lockdown but you can still do a date night at home between the two of you so think about it fortnight or every month to yourselves just as a couple you have to have that to work on the relationship um <clears throat> okay let's get back to the, the the steps number five you have to plan them into the planner you have to write them down so you have to get your you know you have to get your planner and you have to write it down it has to be allocated time in okay and that brings me on to number six when we do it we add in cues so what's the cue so what is a cue a cue is something that happens before you do the habit so for instance going back to our fitness 10 minute walk is going to happen every morning after breakfast your breakfast is the cue okay the cue will help anchor it into your lifestyle this new habit into your lifestyle so you're going to go for that walk 10 minutes after breakfast the breakfast is the cue and it's helping to reinforce it and anchor it and the writing down of the plan in your planner or on your google calendar is another way of it reinforcing it the importance of it in your brain you really need to get your brain on board and and owning it so you know telling it that it's important saying it out loud but writing it down will reinforce anything positive that you want to change in your life number seven and this is important and something you have to think about now before you start the habit is to eliminate as many trips and traps as you can. So what could be your trip or your trap that you're setting yourself up for? And they'll set you up for failure. So again, going back to our fitness, um, if we're out for a walk and our walk takes us by the shop, and every time you go by the shop, you know you're going to buy something. You know you're going to buy something that, that you shouldn't be buying, particularly if your overall goal is to improve your health. Um, then, you know, going in, that's sabotaging yourself. So change your walking route so you won't go by that shop. You, you'll go somewhere else, um, you know, think about it. So look at it look at what you want to do look at the habit and if it is something that can set you up for a trap how can i eliminate these as much as possible now you you might be able to eliminate them all but try and eliminate as many as possible number eight is to set up um, a treats and reward system and i've talked about this i've done a, a full training on it it, this helps you celebrate all those small wins and you need to celebrate them and the reason again you need to celebrate them is you're anchoring them in to your brain you're you're creating that positive step you're reinforcing it with your brain so you know celebrating those small wins so the treats as i've said before are free and given freely and preferably daily um 
the um, rewards, they cost a little bit more than five euros. Um, and they should be like at the end of the week, at the end of the month, and certainly at the end of the 12 weeks, you should have something set up. Now, if you're looking for something, they have to be positive and they can't sabotage. Again, you don't want to be sabotaging all that good work. So don't make that treats and reward system one of your trips or traps. Um, make them positive and soothing to yourself. Um, so I do have, again, I have a whole unit on that in the group if you wanted to join it. Um, so think about it. Grab, you know, grab a piece of paper, do a big brainstorm. What are things that I like that maybe I can reward myself with, that I can treat myself with? Um, and if you want some ideas around that, I do have a series on self-soothing as well in on the website at www.debrabrandpsychologyservices.com. Number nine don't let any mistake stop you um yes you will stumble yes you will fall over the next 12 weeks that's the nature of it the most important thing you could ever do is go okay i forgot to do it yesterday but today i'm going to get back up and do it it's like getting back up on the horse once you fall off or getting behind the wheel of the car if you've had an accident they make you get in behind the wheel of the car again don't let this mistake um you know set you up to stop doing it all together it's the consistency it's the keeping going it's getting back up as they say on the horses i've just said and doing it again the next day um you know people that are successful at um you know setting goals for themselves setting these new habits into their lifestyle are the ones that keep going even if they do make a mistake even if they do fall into that trip or trap they you know see this as a learning experience how can i change this you know how can i do it better the next time it's a learning experience it doesn't mean you're a failure that's the whole point you're not a failure you just fell into a trip or a trap everybody does it everybody does it the difference as i said between those that succeed and don't and those that don't is that the others keep going they get back up and they keep going and they see it as a learning experience. Number 10 would be to get an accountability buddy. Now, somebody, a friend and a positive, a positive friend or family member that's going to support you in this change, this lifestyle change, um, this small mini habit that you're going to do. Now, they don't have to be doing the same thing as you. It is good when two people are doing the same thing, but they don't have to be. But it also has to be that support has to be a two way street. So they have to be, you know, hold you accountable, but in a positive way. So they're encouraging you, um, you know, they're giving you that kick if you need it um, and saying, come on, we can do it. We can get going. But you also have to be doing it for them too. remember that it's a two way street with this positivity. And that can be um, a, a mini habit in and of itself, like to, to create that positive support system around yourself. 11 then brings me on to the negative vampires. Um, these can be a big trap. These people can be a really big trap for you. You know, minimize your contact with them um, or eliminate them if you can. But just don't tell them what you're doing. Just don't tell them. Don't set yourself up for failure by telling them that you're doing this in the first place. Um, you know, you know, they're only going to sabotage you. You know, they'll only try and waylay you and prevent you from getting out for that walk. If we want to go back to our exercise um, fitness routine, um, you just don't do it. Just don't go there. Um, you know, think of them as a trip or a trap. So, no, you know, how can I get around not telling them what I'm doing? How can I get around? Think of them, you know, make the strategy one of your trips or traps a any negative vampire you have in your life um and how can i avoid them how can i avoid setting myself up for failure with these people um so you know don't tell them is one way to do it don't just don't tell them don't bring them into the loop on the on this and the last step and i think it's really really important so please don't skip this one um is you know create a weekly and monthly review um you know how did the week go um, do you need to adjust what you're trying to achieve? Maybe the habit that you tried doing to do was too big. I'll go back to the fitness. Maybe you went all gung ho and tried to do 30 minutes instead of 
bringing it back down and that was too much you're going to be in agony you're going to be in pain maybe it was just too much for you um bring it back down you have to adjust bring it back down and this is part of you know the learning experience um getting back up and doing it again so you bring it back down um adjustments are really normal in the beginning maybe that walk after breakfast wasn't the great best time for you um right now um in our household it's we're hitting the ground running and we have uh, classes straight away we, we're trying to get classes done we're trying to get activities done around school so getting out straight after breakfast wouldn't be a good idea in that case maybe it's lunchtime and you can just get the kids out with you and 10 minutes down the road back they'll use up some of their energy so maybe you know you need to adjust and we you know you will find that particularly as i said at the beginning then plan it out in the planner again for the next week make sure you're writing it down because as i said it's going to reinforce the importance in your brain and when you do that the brain will come on board and it'll start looking for those solutions for you um it'll start problem solving how can you adjust it'll already be working on it subconsciously so i'm going to leave it there and um, i know a lot of people are struggling at the moment so please don't be scared please reach out for help if you feel it as i said i started the group um last year for mums um to help them with their stress and anxiety during covid it's still going on this year i've no intention of shutting it down we have a lot of stress reduction tips in there we have a lot of activities we do in there um to help each other we also try and support each other as much as possible and um you know reach out and if you need to remember i know some of the gps have said they're struggling with trying to get people referred to services you can refer yourself you are able to refer yourself to a counsellor or to a psychologist. Please self-refer. The emergency services are still working. Remember that. Um, if somebody is really suffering um, psychologically, then you can reach out for assistance. The psychiatrists are still working there if you need to. So I'm going to leave it there for today and I'll see you all again next. It's been a very long uh facebook live today um but i will see you all again next saturday morning as usual good morning colette um happy new year to you um lovely to see you and i uh, hope you're hope you're okay and as always to everybody who watches live and in replay and i know there's an awful lot of people watch replay um thank you all for tuning in as always and as i said reach out for help if you need it um we are there we are working and um, we are here to support you.